This video is titled Configuration Manager Site Planning and Network Design. In this video, we will discuss the fundamentals of sites. We will learn about the different site types, what each site supports, and how they can be linked together to form site hierarchies. We will also describe site servers and roles, and how the Configuration Manager environment can be integrated into Active Directory. Finally, we will have a summary of what we learned in the Planning the Configuration Manager Environment section. A site is created when you install System Center Configuration Manager for the first time. This first site must be either a central administration site, also known as a CAS, or a standalone primary site. It is named with a three digit site code of your choice. There are some reserve codes that you cannot use. SMS, for example. So, which site type should you select? That depends on your organization. A standalone primary site is suitable for many organizations and can be used to manage devices without having to install additional sites. A CAS is suitable for larger scale deployments. After you install a CAS, you will need to install one or more primary sites as child sites. This is necessary because a CAS does not manage devices. It provides a central point of administration for the primary sites which actually manage the devices. A secondary site can be installed as a child to a primary site and is suitable for larger remote sites or locations that have slow network connection to the primary site. The primary site still manages all the clients, but the secondary site provides support by compressing and managing data transfer between remote clients and the primary site. And these are the supported configuration manager site hierarchies. On the top left is a single primary site. And as it exists on its own, it is just referred to as a standalone primary site. When you add some secondary sites to the hierarchy, as seen on the top right, then this becomes a primary site. The graphic on the bottom shows a hierarchy containing a CAS, three primary sites and some secondary sites. As we will discuss shortly, a hierarchy containing a CAS is only required for the largest of organizations. Introducing a CAD adds complexity to the environment, which may not be necessary. So please do your research before choosing this hierarchy. So what is supported for each of the site types and hierarchies? This information is subject to change, so it's always better to refer to the official Microsoft documentation. The site address can be found in the notes of this video. A standalone primary site supports up to 175,000 clients. That figure includes up to 150,000 desktops and the rest could be Mac or mobile devices. This is often suitable for most organizations and is the simplest config manager environment to implement. This is what we will be implementing throughout this course. A secondary site supports up to 15,000 desktops and is suitable for larger remote locations. And a CAS hierarchy supports up to 700,000 desktops. Each child primary site in this hierarchy can support up to 150,000 devices. Now, these are the maximum numbers supported for each hierarchy. Obviously, there are other factors to consider when managing at this scale. For example, in a CAS hierarchy, you will need to deploy the Enterprise Edition of SQL Server to cater for such large numbers. Also, you will need to ensure that your site servers are suitably resourced. Refer to the official documentation for size and guidance. Again, you'll find the site address in the notes. So, what is a site server? You install a site server when you launch and complete the Configuration Manager installation wizard. When you create the first site server, you automatically create a site. The following roles are installed by default when you install a site. The site server role is assigned to the computer where you install the site. The site database server role is assigned to the SQL server that hosts the site database. Other site system roles are optional and are only used when you want to use that particular functionality. 
we will encounter these roles as we start to configure the environment. Any computer that hosts a site system role is referred to as a site system server. Two common important roles are the management point and distribution point roles. A management point provides policy and service location information to clients. It also receives configuration data from clients. Distribution points are deployed throughout the network to provide content locally to end clients. It's possible for smaller config manager environments to run all the site system roles directly on the site server. You can then offload roles to additional site system servers as necessary. A configuration manager deployment must be installed in an Active Directory domain. You should extend the Active Directory schema to add attributes that are used by Config Manager. Extending the Active Directory schema is required once for each forest and can be done before or after you install Configuration Manager. Also, you must create a new Active Directory container named System Management in each domain. Config Manager site information is published to Active Directory using this container. Clients can then easily retrieve site information from AD. Publishing Config Manager site information to AD is not required, but is highly recommended. It improves the security of your Configuration Manager hierarchy and reduces administrative overhead. So, what did we learn in this section? We started with an overview of Configuration Manager where we discussed what the product does and how it is named. We learned about the supported clients and how Config Manager integrates with other Microsoft technologies to implement its features. In this video, we learned about sites, hierarchies, site servers and roles. Also, we discussed the importance of publishing Config Manager sites to Active Directory. The next section will be installing Configuration Manager.